The next of the common op-amp op -amp, uh, configurations that we're going to consider is known as the inverting amplifier. It takes its, na its name from the fact that the source voltage that's going to be amplified is connected to the inverting terminal. So with that, then, we might uh, rightfully assume that the because of the name inverting amplifier, that the output voltage is going to be the opposite in sign of the source voltage. So let's go ahead and analyze this as in the same manner that we have the other op-amp circuits by writing a node equation at the inverting op-amp terminal. Before we do that, we're going to remember that due to the virtual short, the voltage at the inverting terminal, V sub n, is equal to the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, and in this case, V sub p, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, has been tied to ground. So V sub n is going to equal zero also. Let's go ahead and write the equation, leaving V sub n in place so that we can see what's happening, then we'll go back and replace V sub n with zero. So starting here, summing the or adding the currents leaving this node, starting with the current going in that direction, we have V sub n minus V sub s divided by R sub s plus the current leaving the node going in that direction is going to be V sub n minus V out divided by R sub f plus the current entering the inverting terminal of the op amp, which of course is zero, so there's nothing to write there, thus the sum of those two terms must equal zero. Now let's replace V sub n with zero in both places. That's zero. That then is zero, and we're left with negative V sub s over R sub s minus V out over R sub f equals zero. So let's just take this negative V out over R sub f to the other side of the equation as a positive V out over R sub f. It's a simple task now to solve for V out as R sub f. Multiplying both sides of the equation by R sub f, we get then that V out is equal to negative V sub s times R sub f over R sub s. As we anticipated, the sign on the output is going to be the opposite sign of the source voltage. And we then can note that the gain for the inverting op amp is equal to negative R sub f over R sub s. It's good to, com to compare this gain term with the gain term that we, de that we derived in the non-inverting amplifier. You can go back and look at your notes, but you may recall that the gain for the non-inverting amplifier was equal to 1 plus R sub F over R sub S. This is supposed to be R sub S there. When you compare these two terms, you'll notice they're very similar. They both have the ratio R sub F over R sub S, but in the non-inverting case, there's also one added to it. So for the same circuit, the gain, if the source was on the non-inverting terminal, would be one larger than the gain experienced when the source is on the inverting terminal. Now, what does that inversion mean? Well, let's just take a couple of examples here real fast. Let's let uh, R sub F equal um, 2 kilo ohms, and we'll let R sub S equal 1 kilo ohm, so that the ratio R sub F over R sub S is equal to 2. And for this first instance, for the first example, let's just assume that V sub S equaled, say, 5 volts. Then our output voltage would be, V out would equal negative V sub S times 2, or negative 10 volts. So DC values are just inverted or just have an opposite sign. What about time varying voltages? What if our V, uh, v source was equal to, say, um, oh, 5 cosine of omega t? What would the output voltage be? Well, V out would be negative 2 times 5 times the cosine of omega t. 
or that's equal to negative 10 cosine of omega t. Well, what does that sign, what, what, what's the amplitude of the output? Well, the amplitude is going to be twice as large as the amplitude of the input, but it's also going to have a sign reversal. What does that mean? Well, if this was our original, where this was 5, the output is going to have twice the amplitude. Let's just say that it's, that's twice the amplitude. But it's also going to have a sign reversal. That means wherever the input was positive, the output is going to be negative. And wherever the input was negative, the output will be positive, and so on. In other words, we say also, or another way of putting it, is that the output is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. And that's what that minus sign in the inverting op-amp gain term does to us. Putting it that, may, that way makes it sound a little ominous, um, what it does to us. Now, it's not that it's doing anything to us. It's not hurting us. And generally speaking, that sign inversion doesn't, uh, doesn't really impact anything. It just, it's there. And when you build these kinds of circuits up in the, in the uh, laboratory and look at them on the oscilloscope, you'll note that there is that 180-degree phase shift.